worship your greatness this evening we acknowledge your majesty we we'll glorify you and we plead with you tonight that it might please you to stretch forth your hand and bless us your people in the name of Jesus Christ Amen you may be seated God bless you hallelujah I said hallelujah all right can you turn your Bible to the book of Isaiah chapter 11 Isaiah 11 we'll do um, Bible study again for like 40 minutes and then I will pray for the sick we trust God for healing in Jesus mighty name and there shall come forth a root out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him and the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord and he shall make him quick of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears hallelujah first of all we need to begin from verse one if you can afford it 40 minutes of unbroken concentration hallelujah 40 minutes of unbroken concentration we should be able to arrive at that place in grace where God will heal any afflicted person just in case you have a child maybe the child is excited because of the presence of God and that excitement can truncate our tranquility it's advisable to um, I think we have a location for yeah so there's a location there just so that we can avoid interference because the grace I have can be disturbed can be distorted um, yeah so I'm just telling you about myself okay now the Bible says they shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse And it's needful for us to understand when scriptures begin to employ the use of metaphors. It's needful for us to be careful in order to capture adequate understanding. So we have a few metaphors here. The first metaphor is rod. Second metaphor is, uh, who is the man on the, amen. Don't just leave my scripture. If I ask you to go to the next verse, you can be mobilized to do so. But don't move um, when I've not desired that you move, in Jesus' name. All right, so we have a few metaphors in the scripture. The first one is a rod. Second one is stem. Third one is branch. Fourth one is root. Now, who can tell us what is missing? Can you reduce my volume a little? Yeah. Who can tell us what is missing? What? Three is missing. 
I don't think the Bible is so difficult to understand, but you don't put your brain, eh? you don't remove your brain when you study the Bible. Come with me. Ah, okay. I've seen that. Okay, what is missing? Fruit. I, okay, leaves are missing. Fruit. No, this is rod. We have a stem. We have roots. If you check the scripture, you see branch there. One of the things that is missing is called fruit. Now, so let's go back to the scripture with this understanding because the metaphors that are used in that scripture are drawn from a tree. Right? So the Bible says that a rod, an authority, will come out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch will grow out of his roots. Are you there? Yes. An extension will come out of his roots. He's talking about his capturing genealogy. And the genealogy that's being captured here is in keeping with what we call the covenant of David. Are you, are you still with me? Yes. Now, so I want us to do Bible study. But you see, the even there's noise in the spiritual atmosphere. But I pray that that noise will not be a problem to you. Amen. So this scripture is descriptive of the manifestation of the covenant of David. We have a few covenants in the Bible. Five covenants in the Bible. And one of the ways to understand the Bible is to take into inventory which covenant is in force. Are you with me? Yes. All right. Okay. Let me show you the context or the articles that make up the covenant of David so that we can apply it to this particular scripture. And then it will be easy for us to understand the context. Because truth does not exist in a vacuum. Truth has a context. You must understand the context adequately before you can find truth in the environment. Now, if we go to the book of Psalms, chapter 89, you will see the covenant of David. And then we can come back to Isaiah, chapter 1. Hallelujah. Psalms 89, beginning from verse number 20. Psalms 89, from verse 20. I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil have I anointed him. It means that God was in a search. And when the God of heaven begins to conduct a search, he searches across generations. He searches across nations. And he said he had eventually found, stumbled upon the personality that he sought. Are you still here? Yes. All right. With my holy oil, I've anointed him with whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exert upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. 
He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast in him. So that's where we got the covenant of David. All right? Are you there? Okay. Verse 29, which is my verse of interest. Are you there in 29? Oh, um, verse, okay. He seed. Are you there? Don't read it like a novel. You will miss the counsel of God that is hidden in it. He's not talking about a seed that will come from David. He spoke about David. He said, I found David my servant. He spoke about the anointing that he invested upon David. And on the strength of the anointing he invested upon David, he was able to win where others failed. He was able to succeed where others were defeated. There was an enablement that was factored with him. Are you there? Yes, it will also interest you to know Okay, first of all, let me not waste my time because I need to arrive at my destination quickly. His seed, talking about David, also I will make to endure forever. Speaking about one of David's descendants, I will make his seed, and if you notice, it is not in the plural. It is in the singular. His seed will I make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. And if you take inventory of the statement, the days of heaven, it is suggestive of eternity. Are you there? So the covenant of David, the subject of the covenant of David is a dynasty. Is a throne. The reason why God gave David that covenant was because of how he ruled when he was king. Are you there? Stay with me. Stay with me. Don't don't allow distraction. Uh, how many of you here are from a royal family? Are you afraid of it? Yes. So we have one. We have. Pastor here is one of three. Now, those of you that are purely natives of Austria, you might not, okay, I think you should. I went to the palace of, yes, yeah, so you, so that lineage. So in Africa, we have chiefs and kings, right? So some of these people are from royal lines. Yeah, but the question is this since we are saying that the covenant of David has to do with a throne. Are you there? And we have that sister from a royal line. Pastor sitting here from a royal line. So the question is, why did Jesus not come through your, yes, your lineage? That's what I want to explain. Are you there? Yes, sir. <laughs> the difference between David the king and other kings is that David was a man after God's heart. So if an issue of justice, an issue of judgment comes up, David will want to know God's heart about that issue. And he is going to exercise his authority as king in the context of his understanding of the heart of God. David was someone that lived in isolation for a long time while he took care of flock. So he had a lot of time to build intimacy with God. He had a lot of time to build his connection with God. So he had his own entertainment. He was entertaining the presence of God. So he had a lot of time to do that. Are you with me? 
And it was also interesting to know that David was a disciple of the prophet Samuel. That's all where he learned the prophetic things. And there are some Psalms that um, are highly prophetic. You will know that David was operating in the office of a prophet in order for him to bring those revelations through Psalms. So David operated in the anointing of a king, in the anointing of a priest. He operated in the anointing of a prophet and in the anointing of a psalmist. There were four anointings on David. And if you are careful in your study of the book of Psalms, you will see that the compilation is actually an aggregation of four books. Not one book, but four books made into one. And, the, and part of the reason is because David operated in four streams of anointing. Now, this David that we are talking about had this very robust relationship with God and his relationship with God influenced everything that he did. So when he became king, you know, I said something here. I said, I said that distraction is going to affect me this evening. The reason why I'm here now, this evening, is because there must be healing. That's the reason. Okay? You don't need to say amen. I'm just telling you what it is. Okay? You don't, you don't listen to news and say amen. CNN. After CNN news, you say amen. No. You don't do that. I know you don't do that. So I'm just telling you the news from heaven. It, God will heal today. All right? No, you, I don't need the amen. Don't worry. You don't even need to believe. Don't believe. I'm just saying what I'm saying. All right? At the end of the service, we'll take inventory and we'll find out what really happened. Your faith is not needed. That you came is good enough. Don't add faith. No. Just come. Sit down. And let's have a ride with Jesus. Now, so, this David, in order for him to execute justice, he inquires at the heart of God. So, in David, God was actually the one that was practically ruling over the affairs of Israel when David was on the throne. David's reign provided an opportunity of heaven to influence the earth so the days of David on the throne can be regarded as the days of heaven on earth. Because the throne of God in heaven was actually the throne that was ruling Israel through the office of the king. It is on the strength of that which happened that God decided to cut covenant with David and to tell him that from his loins, the new David and the greater David is going to find expression. So your grandfather that was the king or your great-grandfather that was the king, he did not rule after God's heart. That was the reason why there was no such promise to him. He, he was after the heart of something else. May the Lord give us understanding. Amen. So, on the strength of that, God now told him that his seed, the seed of David, this is the content of the covenant, will endure forever. Are you there? Yes. That's the first. So, David is going to have a, an, a descendant that will endure forever. Number two, and his throne shall be as the days of heaven. So let's go back to the book of Isaiah. He spoke about a branch that will come out of the stem of Jesse. He's still in keeping with the covenant of David. Oh my. Are you there? Good. So, in Isaiah chapter 11, he begins to give us some insight. He said, There shall come forth a rod, and authority was. Okay, meanwhile, I don't have the time to break all the, tell you all the meanings of the metaphors in the light of scripture. But you can trust me, okay? So, there shall come forth a rod. 
out of the stem of Jesse. So that metaphor rod is, refers to authority, and I think we already know that. An authority was going to come out of the stem of Jesse. Because the issue here is genealogy. So from Jesse's household, and you know that David came out of Jesse's household. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. So he's still talking about all the complications of genealogy in birthing the Christ that is going to be the carrier or the fulfillment of the covenant of David. Now, you will notice, like I said initially, that we have a metaphor root, we have another metaphor branch, we have another metaphor stem. Part of the things that are missing is fruit. And then you see the fruit of this arrangement in the next verse. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. All right? So what rested upon this? The sign, if you read John the Baptist's mandate when he was dispatched into Jordan from the wilderness to begin baptism. It's enshrined in the book of John chapter 1. If you read from read John chapter 1, you read the testimony of John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness. While we went to Israel the other time, they showed us the wilderness where John received his training. It was like a Bible school. They were trying to recapture the original quality of the faith of the Jews. They felt that um, the faith of the Jews had been influenced. Are you there? No need to take you on that journey. Well, the, the faith of the Jews have been, have been eroded. So people like John the Baptist withdrew to the wilderness to seek the Lord so that he would show his way. And there were some teachers in that wilderness that were bringing lectures, teachings about the established ways of God. And which you go through that process for a few years and then you get graduated. You become one of the defenders of the faith. Now, the day before the day of graduation, that's when the word of the Lord came to John the Baptist in the wilderness. So even though he had finished the training, he was never graduated by that platform. The word of the Lord was what moved John the Baptist, and he moved from there to Jordan to begin baptism. That was how he started ministry. And part of the marching orders that John received was that his baptism was going to be a strategy by which the Messiah will be revealed. So, so a lot of people came and they were blessed by his baptism. Some people came, confessed their sins and were refreshed. All kinds of things took place. People came and um, even the tax collectors came to find uh, spiritual assurance and renewal at uh, the river of Jordan in the ministry of John the Baptist. So many good things took place, but the purpose for which the guy was in baptism was not so that people would be blessed. It was a strategy by which the Messiah could be unveiled. Are you still there? So when Jesus showed up and he was lowered into the water and the Bible recorded because the marching orders that were given to John in the wilderness was that anyone upon whom the Holy Spirit shall descend and remain. There are two things there. The descending, it's possible that the Holy Ghost can descend but not remain. So anyone upon whom the Holy Spirit shall descend and remain, he is a higher personality in the order of the baptizers. You see, John baptized with water. And the object, the blessing that was the result of his baptism was repentance. But you see, that was why John was chosen into baptism. 
so that he could find the real baptizer in another order. John himself said that he was not worthy to untie the latchet of his sandals. The elements with which he conducts his own baptism is with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So, so in the order of the Baptist, John was in first cadre. Then there was another dimension of the Baptist. Are you there? Yes. He baptizes with Holy Ghost and fire. So, on Jesus, the Holy Spirit descended and remained upon him. That was how John knew that this was the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. That was how John knew that this is the baptizer in fire. Now, this scripture says that the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, which is the sign to show that he is the Messiah. He is the one of whom the Bible spoke about and when he was referring to the covenant of David. So the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. And then the other things you see there are the fruit that will flow out of that initial investment of spiritual capital. Did you get that? Yes. Okay. Everything God gives you, there is an evidence that you have received it. God can be handing out a blessing to you. And you may claim that you have received it. But the proof that you have received it is that there is, you manifest the evidence of that gift. If we are in this place, expecting to be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, the moment the Holy Spirit fills you, there is an external manifestation that proves that you have received a spiritual thing. You can't fake it because, are you there? Yes, there is a fruit that that investment is supposed to produce. And if you don't have that fruit of manifestation, it means that you did not receive the investment. The day you gave your life to Christ, we are not aware of that day. But, if you begin to manifest the fruit of the recreated human spirit in your character. Are you, are you there? Yes, sir. We are not aware of how you give your life to Christ, but we can identify the result of that impact. There will be fruit eventually. So as we go along the way, you will see that the spirit of God will begin to constrain you, that that's not how to live. The Holy Ghost in your vessel we we'll begin to teach you how to live. Because in the eyes of heaven, the only thing that man is competent in doing is to rebel. So when the Holy Ghost comes, he begins to deliver you from that tendency of rebellion so that you can operate under authority. God establishes his government over your life. And then through your vessel, he can begin to manifest his will. There is, there is, there is this nature of rebellion that God is going to deliver you from. And it is the Holy Spirit that will do those internal workings. And the manifestation of that deliverance will be revealed in character. And that's what the Bible calls the fruit of the Spirit. And you will notice fruit is in singular. Are you there? It's not many fruits, but one fruit manifesting in different dimensions under dif different circumstances. When you put the man under pressure, all right? Are you there? Yes, the a carnal person, someone that is not born again, is likely to snap. But because of the spiritual investment that has taken place on his inside, he doesn't react the way normal people react. That's proof of the fact that he has something beyond that which normal people have. There is always an evidence that comes to show that you have received a spiritual thing. Are you there? Even in the area of getting filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues is just the initial evidence. There are successive evidences. Like your life of holiness is proof of the fact that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. It means that you are saturated with God. 
if you are saturated with, maybe something is saturated with something, when you touch the thing, it is what is saturated with it. There will always be proof that you received something. So the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon this individual. And when the Spirit of God rests upon this individual, there will be fruit manifest. And the catalog of fruit that will be manifest on the account of that investment are itemized as follows. A spirit of wisdom. And you, you, you need the spirit of wisdom because as powerful as you are, you were created to be insufficient. As intelligent as you are, you were able to get a distinction when you sat for your first degree. You got a distinction when you sat for your second degree. You got a distinction when you sat for your third degree. And in the eyes of men and society, you hold a place of esteem and value. However, your education has by no means delivered you from your design. You were designed to be insufficient. And at your best, you are an educated, insufficient man. That's how you were designed. You see, that design is supposed to impart to us a, 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 the spirit of humility so that we can accept the help that God has packaged in the person of the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says, is this the spirit that helped This is my classes. Well, since you are not following, what we will do is that we will cut off some of the syllables. That's how I uh, respond to audiences that are not following. When you will labor in the wilderness for two years, you will desire what I wanted to give you. Then, God will look for a way to give you that. Answer. But for today, you are not... You are not you are not ready for it. You are not ready yet. It, you know, the Lord will give you understanding. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't know what I'm teaching you. Eh? Some decades of my life was extracted are you following what I'm talking about? Yes, I finished Bible school in 1994. That's how many years? You can, you can calculate. You can calculate how many years. After finishing Bible school in 1994, are you there? Yes, sir. I felt I was a great preacher. And I wanted to show the world how much insight I've gathered because I like research. God now said, you are not good for ministry as you are. And he detained me for another 15 years. Are you there? Yes. Studying that same Bible. We, we, I started with the Holy Ghost to study, to study. After a while, I had to throw my Bible school notes away. 15 years in the cave. That's why I will not allow you to trivialize what I'm preaching. If I notice your heart can't take it, don't worry. You need some affliction. Then maybe when you desire it desperately, God will look for a way. So we have jumped. We have jumped. Um, like I said, it took time. It took death, dying to my ambition, dying to my will. Wanted to be a lecturer. Yes. Because... Till I graduated from school, I never saw anyone that could cram as much as I, I did. Not one. And I'm not boasting. I can cram a, a handout of 175 pages. You know, you'll not believe it. So I wanted to go into lecturing, and my objective was to come to class without notes. Give you notes on my brain with my hands in my pocket. <laughs> and I had the intellectual capacity to do it. 
I was on the football field of our campus praying and God spoke to me. And he said, of all the things written about you in heaven, being a lecturer is not one of them. I died. <laughs> and my desire to be a lecturer was anchored on a secret pride that I had because of my intellectual capacity. I normally tell my mates that they were cursed, that they read, their brain is like basket. They, they, think basket. they can't retain knowledge. So God had to take that lecture in a way. I it, it may not mean anything to you, but me, it was the nerve of my life that he took away. And after taking that away, he sentenced me to 15 years of scholarship under his hand. I will not allow you to despise what I got from there. There are many things I learned from him that we can be talking till tomorrow morning on this subject. Yes, I know that. In terms of context, you can't exhaust what is there. It took decades to form. Decades to form. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Then the fruit of that investment is what is captured here. But this is not my emphasis. Now that the spirit of the Lord has rested upon him, there is what the spirit of the Lord will make him. That's where I'm going. When the spirit of the Lord rests upon you, the spirit of the Lord will make you a certain kind of man. Now, if you are not yet that kind of man, if, if you are not the description of that kind of man, it means that you do not know God. It means that you do not understand what was invested on you. It means that you are a Christian by religion. But you don't know the God of the religion called Christianity. By the time you know that God, you will find out that Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is living the God life. A Christian is someone that God has admitted to be a partaker of his nature. That means even though he wears a human vessel, a human container, he will not operate like a human being. You will be mistaken if you think I'm a human being. And you come to fight me with the tools of humanity. You will be mistaken. You will find resources that nothing fashioned among men or devils will be able to defeat not because in myself I have any capacity to boast of, but divinity has invited me to be a partaker of their nature. There is a kind of person that you become when that investment upon your life is fully galvanized. That is where I'm going. And that is in verse 3 of the book of Isaiah chapter 11. Are you with me? Yes. 27 years as an intercessor. Because when I finished Bible school, I wanted to know God. I wanted to talk to God and hear God talk to me. So I practiced talking to God for years. I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. I knew that this is the life he wanted me to live, so I gave myself to it the same way I would have given myself to lecturing. Do you know what it means to sit up in the night and you are talking to God? Not in tongues. In English, do you? If you do that regularly, it will down on you. You will now have an insight that God is a person that you can discuss with. So when you are troubled, 
can talk to him. Most of us pray in tongues, but you are not conscious of the God you are communicating with. That's why you can do it. You can pray in tongues. And you watch a movie. Your spirit is charging. Huh? There's, there's profit. Because the Bible says, anyone that comes to God, if you come at all, for any reason for which you came, there's a reward for your attempt to engage God. So you spend time speaking in tongues. That's powerful. But if you are going to talk to God, in the context that I'm trying to define, you must be, your entire being must be consumed in that engagement. So I had to learn how to talk to him. Then you now discover that the God that we serve, he does not speak much. Are you there? He only answers much, but he does not speak much. So, you can speak to him. When I started trying to speak to God, are you there? Yes, sir. Sit on the seat. Give, you can give him one seat too, so that you know that, okay, let's talk. Then you tell him all your fears. You might do that for six months and he will not respond. And that's why he says that without faith you cannot please him. If after six months of attempting that, you get discouraged and you stop. It means you didn't have faith in the beginning. Because God is not a man. You are trying to learn about a new person you have never known before. And you are expecting the person to behave the way you want him to behave. You, you are not, you don't mean business. Speak to him. Speak to him. After nine months, when you speak to him, he will answer. Speak to him, he will answer. Speak to him, he will answer. Then you will know what the psalmist experienced for him to call God a very present help in the time of trouble. If, if your knowledge of God cannot bring him on the scene in the day of trouble, you don't have a God. Think, you are not with me. I'm not saying you are not born again. I'm just saying you, God is not involved in your daily life. You have, you have designed other means of survival. You've designed other means of support. You've designed other means of sustenance. So you will not be able to bring him into your trouble, into your crisis. That means you are naked with that covering. That's the description of your life. The investment of God is designed to make you a certain kind of individual. Oh my God. In verse 3, this is what it makes him. And shall make him of quick understanding. Are you there? Yes. I'm talking about how a spirit being that is a person that is now factored in your life. What he will do, what he wants to do to you. How he will influence your life to put you on the advantage. The first thing he does is that he makes you quick in understanding. Second thing he does is that he makes you quick in the fear of God. I, I know you are aware that the fear of God is the entry point into wisdom. I will explain that to you. Are you still with me? Yes. When you want to follow God, don't do what you are doing. Give yourself to him. The way those people that serve spirits in the village, the way they give themselves to the spirit, and the spirit now shapes them to become the kind of person that they eventually become, is because of their commitment to give themselves over to be shaped by that spirit that they become strong. Because the Bible says that the people that do know their God, not Jehovah, their own God, they shall be strong. The way you are serving God, you will not know him enough for you to be strong. You will not know him enough for you to do exploits in his name. Because everybody does church as if it's, well, it's our culture. We go to church on Wednesday. 
you are, you are wasting your life. You are wasting your life. I was not born into a poor family. My father was a rich man. I started my journey in riches. I did not look for Jesus because I was poor. Are you, do you understand what I'm talking about? In our state, my dad was the number two man in the state when I was, I became conscious of where I was. I was not born into poverty. It's not because I was running from something. That's why I now, no. I gave my life to Christ in church one day and I figured, I was seven. I figured that, okay, if Jehovah is my God, are you there? then I need to give myself over to him. Allow him to shape me. That means I will build intimacy with him until I know how he operates, what he likes, what he does not like. If you are serving a God that is invincible, you need to take time to develop a relationship with him to the end that you know his likes, his dislikes, his preferences, his style, his method, his strategy. Not just dead Bible study, uh, reading the Bible as a religious practice, but you don't know the one whose inspiration dead that book. You need to start by learning how to talk to him. When you speak in tongues for 45 minutes, 60 minutes, your spirit is charged. Then talk to him. Your, there's power on your utterance. He can travel into the spirit realm. Learn how to talk. All those things you call your challenges, learn how to tell him in your understanding. Are you there? Yes, sir. And keep talking. At least one hour of that prayer, talk. Talk in your language. A time will come where he will start answering. Be patient. You can't learn God until God is willing to reveal himself. A lot of us are casual about it. And that's why he's a stranger to you. And in the day of crisis, you cannot bring him on the scene. And as I travel from place to place preaching the gospel, I see people that believe God is an alternative. That's why you will not see him around. For me, it's not an alternative. It's the only life that I have. So if I call his name here, he will answer me. Amen. No, don't say amen quickly. Look on your own life. Do you have someone to call? Because the witch, the wizard, has somebody to call in the day of trouble when things have overwhelmed him. He runs home. That room where his altar is, he unveils it, carries it, and begins to do some incantation. Do some incantation. Do some. He believes in, he has worked with that thing for long. He knows the thing is effective. What do you have that is effective? Sickness will blow across and come on you. Then you go and drip. You are crippled. You do that for another two years. Then the drugs begin to help you. Then you begin to recover. Then, okay. Then you continue. God did not create us as victims. The thing is that we are not humble enough to know, to accept that we are incapacitated. We are limited. So we go on with our own strength, expecting to overwhelm the challenges of life on the strength of our ability. Ah, the Bible says that Holy Spirit you received can make you, make you a certain kind of man. Now, so we're going to dwell here. 
This is a means by which we want to evaluate ourselves. Have you been made? Have you been made? If somebody dies now, will it occur to anybody to call you to come and look into the situation? Huh? Oh, you are not. Oh. And shall make him. Now, if you have a Bible that is supported with um, with a lexicon, now, I, I I do. My own Bible is. Are you there? Is your Bible supported with a lexicon? I don't want to use my own Bible. Yes, whose Bible is supported with a lexicon? So, can you help me look for the word quick in Hebrew? The word that was translated quick in verse 3. Is it only you that has? That one can help you. If you want to study your Bible, first of all, go and study the geography of Israel. Start from there. No, sit down, sit down. You know Israel? All the things that we are reading took place in physical locations. No, I will tell you this one in private. The others don't need it. Quick, click on quick. What, what do you have? No, no, no. Quick and understand, yeah? No. Call the word in Hebrew. What is it? It's ruach. Ruach is the same word for breath. When the Bible says that by the blast of his nostrils he parted the Red Sea, it's ruach. Are you there? Do you see in this scripture, it says because the first thing that he will do to you in making you is that he will give you ruach. Someone that has ruach. Are you there? Yes, sir. Doesn't need to judge after the sight of his eyes. You know, your eyes are part of your senses. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You believe that the things that you see are true. Is that not so? Yes, sir. Sister, if you can see something, don't you believe it's true? If you can touch something, don't you believe it's true? Now, that level of education came through the exercise of your senses. He's saying that if you receive Ruach. Another sense will be developed that will make you no longer judge after the sight of your eyes. Ruach will be a manifestation of a sense just like sight, just like hearing, just like smell, just like touch. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, He brings Ruach. That ruach is a substitute for your sight. You can, you can be seeing something with your physical eyes, but the ruach can give you another insight that is different from what you are seeing. And the ruach is superior to sight, so you can abandon what you are seeing and call it a lie because ruach gave you another insight that is contrary to what your eyes are saying. If the ruach has not begun to operate like this in you. Huh? Are you there? Yes. You are still operating like a normal human being. Your response to situations will be normal. Your response to, 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 to circumstances will be human, normal. 
you don't have the help yet. When he comes to help you, and you can discern that help, it comes in form of rock. <clears throat> it will make you quick in understanding. It means that there, there are things that you cannot learn that it will bring to your knowledge. There are things that cannot be taught that it will bring to your knowledge. Anyone that is grounded in this thing will pre prefer the witness that came through that rock than his physical sense. That is what faith is. Someone can be sick and then he receives in his spirit you are healed now, stand up. All the symptoms of the sickness is still there. But until he exalts that ruach higher than what he is feeling, he will never make an attempt to stand up. And if he does not stand up, it means he doesn't believe God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, to walk with God. The moment he steps out, And he no longer considers his condition. Then the power of healing. He becomes a recipient of that power. By what wisdom have you navigated all these years? Because if the spirit is going to make you. The first evidence that he's making you. Is that he makes you quick. In understanding. He makes you. Ruach. The Ruach opens you to the faculty of spiritual senses that is superior to your physical senses. You know, in Nigeria, when you are traveling to the village, there's a way they load vehicles. Huh? Oh, okay. The driver's seat. The driver is sitting here. Are you with me? Yes. Then they open the front door. The front door. Then someone will sit on half of the driver's seat. The driver will be sitting on half. Part of his body will be outside of the window. Like this. And then he will have his right hand to manipulate the steering. The left is outside. Then first passenger will sit in. Second one will sit on the and what they call it? The handbrake. The handbrake. They'll push the handbrake down. Then you sit there and half of this side and then the last passenger will sit here and put some of his hand outside. That's the front. That's the loading of the front seat. So if they load the front seat like that, you can imagine anything can happen at the back. And this loading formula is not with any form of recourse to the size of the car. Even if the car is a small car, the loading formula is the same. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> so one of those days, they finished, one of the passengers was seriously sick. But the, the driver said, I don't, I don't know sickness. The way we load the car, when they are healthy people. That's how we load it when they are sick people. Because there is an amount of money that should come out of that transaction. I know you don't understand this. This I've been seeing your new cars everywhere. New cars, new cars. I say, oh, this is great. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So it came to pass when they loaded the car like that and they were moving on the journey. They now discovered that one of the passengers in front, the lady had died. They packed the car. Fortunately for them, a man of God was in that vehicle. And the man of God did not accept the fact that someone should die in the vehicle that is traveling. So why they were they were confused. Everybody was, okay, how are we going to do this? Who are we going to call? And <laughs> if you know this village I'm talking about, there's no network, no phone call network. So where is this girl even going? Where will that 
Ah, the questions were too many. The man of God left them and went to commune with God. And God gave him Ruach. He told him, go to the dead body and pinch her. Initially, when he pinched her, nothing happened. But he knew that that was the instruction. So he left his hand there. And after three minutes, the girl sneezed and came back to life. No prayer. Oh, are you there? Ruach. And she sneezed and rose from the dead. And when she rose from the dead, the sickness that killed her was still came back with her. She was still sick. Oh. The anointing that raised the dead is this sickness that he cannot take away. Ah. That moment was saved. He saved the day because he was quick in understanding. He was enabled into the realm of the storehouse of wisdom. There are many people that we buried that had nothing to do with death. Nothing. But there was no one on whose that was made by the Holy Ghost in the vicinity that had access to the economy of Ruach. The breath of God could not make any meaning on the life of anyone there. That's the congregation of the dead. Because God cannot wield his hand in their midst. And I tell you, Satan, the last time I checked, Satan is alive. He's doing well. And he's visiting people. When you have a situation that is orchestrated from the realm of the spirit, that is when you will know that your degree, even though it got you a job, cannot bring you deliverance. Come with me to the book of John. We are still, that list there, that's what we want to finish. That list. Shall make you quick in understanding. It shall make you quick in the fear of God. So that you do not judge after the sight of your eyes. So that you do not judge after the hearing of your ears. But with righteousness. You will judge and make war. Has it? Have you ever meditated on how righteousness is an equipment for warfare? We seek men that have been made by the Holy Ghost. Do you still remember? In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, he said, let us what? Make. Are you there? Yes. Make. So, project man was the making of man. And it was the entire council of the Godhead that came up with that policy. Is it true? Yes. Okay. So, when the implementation started, the first person that went to work was the father. God now created man, the father. 28, verse 28. Where are you? Um, 27. So God created. Is that make? Oh, you are not, you are not following. The project said, let us, what? Make. And three individuals were in, involved. The first individual started by creating man. It's the first individual. The word create there is bara, which means to bring into existence out of nothing. So this aspect of man came from God. 
it is immaterial and that's why this aspect of man at the end of his journey will still go back to God it is in that context that the Bible says that after this frame of reference the next item in the schedule of the kingdom is judgment and how will judgment take place that part of God that was will right there so the first attempt which was done by the father was bara okay genesis chapter 2 verse 7 verse 5 reads and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb before it grew for the lord god had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was no man to till the ground verse 7 he now says and the Lord God formed man. Is that make? And it will interest you to know that the pre-incarnate name of Jesus is the Lord God, which is Jehovah Elohim. What did he do? He formed man. Is the, is the Lord God, Jehovah Elohim, that gave us this frame of two hands, two eyes. Two. This is what? When the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, then he breathed into his nostril the breath of life and released what was created to come dwell in the vessel that was formed. Are you there? Yes. At that point, the civilization of man was at the soul level. Man became a living soul, but he was not yet made. The last aspect of his making will be that he would need to exercise his power of free choice to choose life and eat of the tree of life. Then the life of God would have entered into his system. Because as at this point he was innocent, but he was not righteous. Because he was not a partaker of the divine nature. The Holy Ghost was in that fruit that he would have eaten. And that is how he would have been made. So the final crowning of the entire project is in the hands of the Holy Spirit who was not allowed to perform before the wreckage took place. So he's given us an insight that when that Spirit of God comes upon you, he's not there to play with you, he's there to make you. Yeah. And there are powers and abilities that he will give anyone that he has made. One of them is that is work we make you quick in understand I'm talking about understanding that is not a product of study it's not a product of a lecture it's not because you attended a lecture or stumbled on the library my dad was a very devoted Christian every evening will come and do Bible study then he will stand up as a priest pray sometimes we want to travel he will pray for the journey Say, let there be no accident but there will be accident so I was now wondering we prayed about a no accident situation only for us to encounter an accident. Satan was playing with us because he knew we did not know God. We had a religion. We had a religion that compelled us and brought the responsibility of us doing morning devotions, which is powerful. But you are not going to live your life based on morning devotions. Money devotion cannot sponsor your life. You will need to go deeper than that elementary kindergarten orientation. Yeah. So I wanted to find out why our prayers were not answered. That was what led me to the journey of the spirit. And I said I will never, I will not come back home until I find God. 
So I was in the city of Kano, for those of you that know Nigeria. I prayed seven hours every day from January with fasting, February, March, April, May, June, July, August 8th. God spoke to me. He said, I can see that you are praying. Then he stopped. I was confused. Why will you come? I started this exercise since January. Now you are telling me that you can see that I'm praying. Oh, then I did not know the way of the Spirit. I did not understand that there was a schedule, a calendar. I was drawn out for every man because God will visit every man. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou had made him a little lower than the Elohim, and thou had crowned him with glory and with honor. And in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 26, the Bible says that he made man of one blood, and he preordained the appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation. He has made of one blood all nations of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined the times before appointed, that is, times of visitation and boundaries of habitation. So God determines his time to visit you and he also determines the boundaries that you should, the nation, the location where you must be based in order to fulfill destiny. Are you there? Yes. So I continue. In all, it was 264 days of praying and fasting. I said, if, if he doesn't show up, I will not go back home. Because what am I going back to? To prayers that we pray and the opposite happens before the sun goes down? Who were victims? Who were victims of the devil? Our prayer had no force. Our faith had no, was nothing to reckon with. So I continued in our prayer. On the 264th day, I came back from the office, dropped my bag, and I wanted to run to the mountain for prayers. Hallelujah. Then I felt that there were people in my room. The Ruach has started giving me understanding of the fact that it's not only the natural realm that exists. There's another realm that is intertwined with the natural realm, but it sits in another dimension. The spirit realm is not different from this realm in terms of distance. It is here. It is intertwined with this realm. In fact, the preacher in the book of Ecclesiastes, if you read his book, you will find that the spirit realm is so intertwined with the natural realm such that it's even impossible for you to find the boundary. He said he went to the field of a man, a lazy man. Went to a field of a man that did not have understanding. And the stone wall was broken over. It was overgrown with weeds. This was natural observation. Then wisdom began to speak to him. He had a little sleep. Still, this, it's the same matter that was the matter of interest. But the Holy Ghost had picked up his observation and wanted to give him perspective from the realm, the realm of Roak. He had a little sleep. He had a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travelleth and thy want as an arm warrior. Where is the boundary? Because it was a physical thing he was looking at. But there was a spiritual interpretation. Are you there? Yes. Oh, you are not following me. You are not following yes. Abraham was called from all the Chaldees to go to a land that God will show him. The place he was going to was a physical place. Are you, are you still following one of them? Yes. Oh, you are not. You are not with me. The place he was going to was a physical place. A physical location. But God decided not to give Abraham a map. 
He said, your destiny cannot be fulfilled in all of the Chaldees, your native country. Get out from among your people. Get out from your kindred. Get out from your country. If you ever want to fulfill destiny, <laughs> you must find there is a place for your destiny and it's not here. So now that the man was convinced to travel, God did not give him a map. Meanwhile, the place he was going to was a physical location. He said, you will go to the, a land that I will show you. It means every dream was part of the map. Every inspiration was part of the map. Every vision was part of the map. Now, if you are in that situation, you will never want to quarrel with God because he will leave you in the wilderness. You have not depended on God the way Abraham depended on God to find the, the sat nav for navigation to the place the land that had the capacity to support his destiny. If you have not depended on God like that, you can't know him. There will be no need for him to invest rock in your life. Without a map. And he began to navigate. When he spends the night, he raises an altar. And begins to commune. He can stay there for another three weeks communing, communing. And then at the foot of the altar, in his sleep, God will say, okay, you go like this. You must pass through Zika. He wakes up, carries his tent, folds it, and he begins to make it to Zika. When he arrives at Zika, puts another altar. So the thing he built, are you, are you still here? The thing he built was his altar but his tent, he pitched it. So the tent was temporary. The altar was permanent. But for us, we have our tents are permanent. And the altar is temporary. When you are angry, you don't pray. When you are broke, you don't pray. When you are sick, you relieve yourself of prayer. That was not Abraham. And unfortunately for you and me, Abraham had already set the pattern. So God will not accept anything that is less than Abraham. Because Abraham is an example of a man that had to engage God by faith. He got three titles because of his obedience to God. He became the friend of God. He became the father of faith. He became the father of many nations. Such that Jews, Christians and Muslims claim him to be their spiritual ancestor. So if I trace all the houses you have stayed and there's no permanent altar there of angels ascending and descending, you missed your map. The map can only come by rock for you to be quickened with the understanding that comes when the breath of God is invested into your spirit. It, it, it triggers visions. It triggers understanding. It triggers insight. So I said, I will not come back home. 264th day of prayer. Ruach. Then I realized I was not alone in the room. So I dropped my back. Then I asked God, if you are the one that is trying to reveal yourself to me that I have not been paying attention, have mercy on me. And show me who these people are. That was the day that I saw angelic beings. From that day till today. Yeah. I came back from work 4 p.m. in the evening. That encounter ended 3 a.m. in the morning. Time was taken away. Time was frozen. That was when I saw the majesty of God on high. You can't stand in that light. Yeah? <laughs> there are some things you will encounter that will shift your life forever. You can't stand there. There's no king on earth 
that carries that majesty. No king. No king. So the honor I give him, I will give no man. Because I've seen his light. I've seen his glory. We went to Kenya. When we got to Kenya, my son in the ministry, he, he invited me to Kenya. So, came there. He came and told me after the first night, One of the contestants for presidency in Kenya wants to come and see you tomorrow. Say, see me. Say, okay. I will give you a feedback on that. So when everybody went to sleep, I stood up in the night. I was looking for him. Twelve midnight. Looking for him. Where are you? Where are you? One o'clock. Where are you? Two o'clock. Then the ruach comes. Then I begin to discuss with him. He said, the man that you are going to see tomorrow, name him David. Call him David. Because he is going to be the president of Kenya. Tell him that I was the one that caused division between him and the president so that the current president will never be able to say that I made you king. Yeah. As at the, are, you, are you still with me? Yes, sir. As at the time I was going to deliver this message, that man was expelled from the leading political party. As at the time I was going to deliver this message, the president was supporting someone in the opposition party to become president. Are you, are you, you, do you understand? Those of you that, then the Lord said, go and call him David. Now, if you don't know Ruach, don't put yourself in that condition. Because you may not be able to go back to Kenya and preach the gospel that they will believe you again. But you know what? I have seen Jesus step out of heaven and come to my bedroom many times. I know how it is. I know the experience. And I'm not boasting. He gave me the privilege by his mercy. If I tell you I have not seen it, I lied. So we went for the meeting. I did a teaching. And when the presence of God came, I told him that the Lord calls you David. They were there. In fact, the security people, secret service people had to check my details, check everywhere, because they have not heard my name before. Who is this man? They have. So when they checked and I was seeing them, they cleared, okay, yes, yes, yes. yes. Say your name is David. And this will come to pass. And as I was talking, I saw a court, court room. And I said, I'm seeing a court situation. Have you forgotten all the things I said? My enemies went and got the video of that prophecy. And they kept it waiting for it to fail because Kenyans knew Kenyans did not say amen when I was prophesying because they knew it was impossible for that prophecy to come to pass so my enemies went and captured the tape so that when it fails they will now come and say okay we have a false prophet in but none of them was given that opportunity because It came to pass. And the case went to court. They went to contest it. And it still won in court. According to the word 
of the law. No human being, don't say hallelujah yet, wait, no human being has that insight. I'm not trying to sell myself to you. My relationship with, with God will still stand even if I don't come to Austria. So I'm not. No human being has that intelligence to bring out that dimension except he was made quick in understanding. Kenya invited me for the swearing in. They gave me a business class seat on Kenya Airways to Nairobi. When I came out of the airport, people wanted to lie on the ground. And if they had done it, me too, I would have gone down. And it would have been it. So that was why, yes. Because I knew that the, the one that should be celebrated, they can't see him. I know that one. I'm just a male messenger that heard the whispers of wisdom and spoke to the sons of men. If every one of us here understands what it means to really operate in the full blessing of the Holy Ghost, the things you worry about today will not be your worry. Oh my God. Oh my God. You can break a curse from the life of an individual. You can turn the hand of Satan backward. That night when I saw people as the president-elect drove into the stadium and the nation rejoiced. 60,000 people in Kasarani Stadium of Nairobi, Kenya. I cried. I said, Lord, when will you deliver Nigeria? That was my only prayer. And I prayed that prayer for two hours. Can you give us a moment to see this deliverance in our lifetime? That was a prayer. Oh my God. You need to see the joy. Because finally God's man was going to mount the throne. He shall make thee quick and understand. My mom was making a call. I waited for her to finish. When she finished, I said, the person that called you lied to you. I said, my son. You know, it's difficult for your mother to believe that you are a prophet. It's very difficult. By evening that day, she confirmed what I told her. I just came out of the prayer room and his voice was still on me. And then he now whispered to me. I said, ah, somebody's lying to your mother. I said, ah, you have been? He said, lie. He lied. No man has that intelligence. It is the work of God. For he shall make thee quick in understanding and in the fear of God and you will judge not after the sight of your eyes nor the hearing of your ears but with righteousness you will judge and make war they brought a blind woman to my house they said she, she got blind yesterday night a demon struck her I laid my hands on her and he whispered to me he said I've taken away the blindness but physically she was still blind and I told the woman woman your blindness has been taken away she didn't say amen because she was still blind then I went inside as they were taking the woman away to go home the eyes began to see A woman came to me and said, Oh, my daughter is getting married. I want to bring her to you for prayers. I said, That's great. So I waited in the office. And then they brought this lady. And when they brought the, the lady, I said, ah, Mother, your daughter is dead. 
she's dead. <laughs> the master, what is this problem? I said, okay, okay, calm down. So I touched her on the head. She fell down. Then this white, the whole eye became white. The red, I don't know where the black went. She was like that for 30 minutes. So I was not describing how the spirit of death operates. I gave her a lecture for like 30 minutes. That's okay. I casted out the spirit. I said, okay, your daughter can marry now. It shall make him quick. No understanding. That's why I don't go to the market at home. Because when you are talking to the person you are want to buy something from, then you become quick in understanding. Right? It's not a good thing. The bank. You can break the curse on your family. You can shine like the brightness of the firmament. There are some things I wanted to say that. Ah. So let us dwell on Ruach and go to the book of John, chapter 3. Give me John, chapter 3. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. He has another instrument by which he makes judgment. He has another instrument by which he can perceive. You can't tell him a lie successfully. Because as you are lying, he can see the lying spirit that is speaking. So with righteousness, he judges. With righteousness, he makes war. He's a different kind of man. That's the idea of man that God had in mind when he said, let us make man. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews the same came to Jesus by night and said Rabbi we know that thou art a teacher come from God because no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him are you there? Yes, now if you check carefully John chapter 3 verse 1 is quite interesting. The introduction in John chapter 3 verse 1 is too boisterous. Because the introduction captured that there was a man who was a Pharisee Nicodemus ruler and he is a Jew. Ah, that's too much. And I will tell you why that boisterous introduction was allowed. Are you there? Yes, sir. You will know from the next verse. So we can talk about Nicodemus from the perspective of his being a Pharisee. We can talk about him from his perspective of being a Jew. We can talk about him from his perspective of being a ruler. We can talk about him so many angles that we could talk about him on the strength of this introduction. But when Jesus wanted to address him, next verse, in the eyes of Jesus, meanwhile, this is supposed to be an accreditation. Verse 2. Uh, how many people visited Jesus. This is not one person. Nicodemus, just one person. But when he wanted to address Jesus, this is what he said. Rabbi, we, underline that. So he did not come alone. He came a group sent him. A group 
deployed him. He had a group, a clique, in the Sanhedrin, in the Jewish ruling council. This persuasion that he came to uncover was the position of that group. Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God because no one can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. This is accreditation. I was expecting Jesus to say, we've been waiting for these people to comment about my ministry. Do you realize that this accreditation came in the night? Have you ever seen any accreditation of a university that took place in the night? I don't want to go there. Let's, <laughs> let's just leave that thing. <laughs> Meanwhile, that's not where I'm going. Okay, I'm just playing with you to see if you are still here. Are you there? Yes, sir. It's what Jesus said that I want to show you, which is in verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Are you there? In the eyes of Jesus, what it means to be born again is to have perception through the Holy Spirit to design the dimensions of heaven. Read it again. In the eyes of Jesus, what it means to be born again is to be able to design the kingdom of God that is now in you. I will explain that. Because the word see, as used in this scripture, is idol in the Greek, which means to perceive by the use of senses. I'm still talking about Roak. When you were in your mother's womb about nine months, you had eyes in the womb. You had ears in the womb. You had legs. You had hands in the womb. But your eyes were not functional because they were not meant for the womb. You had to be born first before your eyes became functional. Are you there? Yes. Jesus is saying you have spiritual senses but you will need to be born again before those spiritual senses will be activated. And the moment the Holy Ghost comes into your vessel, He sends ruach on your spiritual senses and they are activated. It is only by the use of these spiritual senses that you can design the things of Are you still with me? Yes. Apart from the ruach, because when you got born again, the Holy Spirit now tabernacled your heart. Part of what he's doing in your heart is to activate your spiritual senses that are built on your spirit man. And when those senses come alive, then you can perceive the things of God. The knowledge of God is in what? It's not cerebral. And that's why Jesus said that the kingdom of God is inside. It is where the spirit of God is. The spirit of God was the one that brought the kingdom of God into your vessel. That's how you became a child of God. And that's how heaven became your nationality. I do. Senses. 
It says, it's these senses that come alive. Oh my God. Oh, I'll come back there. I think I need to round up. My time is gone. And we have not started this journey actually. I'm still trying to introduce a message, you know? That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to show you your spiritual senses. If you know what it is, when it comes alive, you'll be able to detect that this is the experience that man was talking about. This is what we call New Testament preaching. New Testament preaching is to reveal to you what you have become because you gave your life to Christ. The dimensions of the new man. It's not every message that is preached from the Bible that is New Testament. Any message that doesn't reveal who you have become. Because the prototype of the kind of man that God wants all of us to be is Jesus. Jesus is the pattern man that has received approval from God. And that was what his witness that came during John the Baptist baptismal service was about. This one is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. This is the idea. I had in mind when I wanted to create a man. This is the pattern man. It means that it's only Jesus that God will accept. Only Jesus. You are not following. I have an ATM card. Is that what you call it here? Huh? A bank card. Bank command. Mm, I see. If you slot it into the machine in Nigeria, the first thing that will appear is my name. Welcome. Then it will say my name before I can start transacting. Are you there? If I give Pastor Emmanuel my card in Nigeria and I say, You go withdraw money. When Pastor Emmanuel goes there and he slots it in, the card will say, Welcome, I'm saying my name, not his name. Then he can transact. Because the machine sees him as me. That's why he opens my file to him. That's what happened in salvation. God will only accept Jesus. Are you there? Yes, sir. So God had to smuggle the office of Jesus into your heart through the Holy Ghost. When you say, I come in Jesus' name, the Father will need to respond to you as Jesus. And that's why the syllabus of the Christian life, when regeneration took place, and regeneration took place in your spirit, then transformation begins to take place in your mind, then conformation begins to take place in your soul. Then glorification takes place after this life. When you no longer have a body of earth. Because the Bible says that those he called and your calling took place before time. Them he did predestinate. Predestination took place before time. Those he predestinated then he justified. It means justification is a legal word, which is the result of what Jesus did on the cross that you accepted. Because of that, you are discharged and acquitted. That's what justification means. Those he justified. So the vision is to bring you into glory. Glory is the original habitat for man. For my, I don't know. Are you? Oh, yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. Are you following what I'm talking about here? Yes, Except a man be born again. 
he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see. The possibility of him being quickened in his spiritual senses to be able to identify divine things, heaven, no, he's cut off from that economy. So I will show you one spiritual sense, just one. You study the remaining three. John chapter 5, verse 20 and 21. After that, we'll do Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27. John 5, 20. For the Father loveth the Son and showeth him all things that himself doeth. Are you there? Yes, sir. The father loved the son because the love, because of the love that the father has for the son. What does it do? It shows the son the things he's doing. It's part of the requirements of the covenant of love for God to show you what he is doing. Are you there? Yes, sir. Are you with me? Have you read the scripture that says, call unto me and I will answer you? Why did you pray? You prayed because you wanted an answer. God said, you call. I will give you your answers. But I'm not asking you to call because of answers. Call unto me, I will answer you. And in addition to your answers, I will show you. The reason why I asked you to call is because I have an intention to show you greater mighty things which you do not know. But I know that you will not be interested if answers are not involved. So, I will give you your answers, but I will take you beyond your answers and bring you into that place where I can show you. So, this is the first spiritual sense. It is sight that comes by affection. Have you ever seen the sight? Has this eye ever open your spiritual eye has it opened to see glory before if you have not had that experience you are not in spiritual health you need to be admitted in the hospital of God's intensive care it means you are blind yes you are blind and you cannot see do you know how handicapped it is for someone to be blind? I saw one woman, while we, no, one man in, uh, in Amsterdam. He was just using one stick and we were like, I said, no. That's how we look like when our spiritual eyes are shut. Meanwhile, it is the ruach that we quicken that sense of sight and then you see it through the Holy Ghost. And if you have not yet seen as such, then you are blind. Why we look not on the things that are seen? For the things that are seen, the Bible says, are temporal. You cannot find your destiny among the things that are seen. Your destiny is locked up in Christ Jesus. There's an administration that handles your destiny. You will never be able to perceive it, even though it is yours. It was not kept from you, it was kept for you. You will need some eyes, some spectacles, to be able to look upon the things that God has ordained for you. So the Holy Spirit will need to introduce you to you because you are dead. And your life is hid in Christ and Christ is hid in God. Some unpacking will need to take place before you see what was written concerning you. He never keeps the things he does in common places so that you will not trivialize it. As I pressed in the place of prayer, that was when I discovered that God was giving me a great strength. And the strength, of all the strengths he unpacked, the tallest, because there were many graces, many anointings, 
that he unpacked out of his book. And he said, I was supposed to walk in them. The tallest among them was their teaching grace. It was taller than all the other graces. So I found myself. So when I found myself and I knew that my major mission in life was to build sons for the kingdom of God so that God could fill the gap of missionary manpower upon the face of the earth. I gave myself to studying the Bible. Pray in the Holy Ghost for like one hour and come on the book. I can study my Bible for 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning. Just, just studying. Me and the Holy Ghost. Just studying. Just studying. And I'm, I'm studying five verses. Five verses. And it takes me to the next day. Oh, a time comes in my Bible study that the scriptures begin to speak to me. I know you don't know that experience. Yeah. When I'm in that mood, my wife knows. She, she will leave me alone. Nothing should come there. They, oh, Jeremiah is talking. And I can hear him prophesy. The way he did, does say it. I can hear it. I can hear it. It's alive. It becomes living. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. If you don't know the Ruach. You are operating with human intelligence. Navigating with human skill and wisdom. In this crooked world. That the prince of this world has captured. You want to survive. By power and by might. You have failed already. Except you receive the advantage. That comes through the Holy Ghost. Your journey will not be far. Asaboko kimahanteli. Asaboko ria masi komendai. Asaboko ria sika mahabai to Yes, I've seen that. I've seen moments when I'm on my knees praying and Jesus begins to walk into my room. I've seen. The light is so bright. I know that if I lift my head, I'll become blind. So I just. I just hide that. And I've seen him come to my room and he, he's, he left his presence there for three days. Such that if you want to come into that room, you will be afraid. You will, need to, you will know something is there. So when death came to take me and he saw me in that glory because they sent death to me, he turned back one. I've seen death turn back on. My end will not come by the hand of witches. It will not come by the hand of bomb, a bomb, a bomb detonated. Then you hear, I die. It's not me. It will not come by a disease, a plague, COVID. If you check the list, you don't bother. My name is not there. I know how many years I will sojourn on this earth. And before that time comes, nothing will take me out. The time has come for the sons of God to awake out of slumber. Many years of slumber. And the reason, you've been living for money. Rising and sleeping for money. That's why you are a victim. That's why when the prices change, your economy is thrown into confusion. You have no covering, no shelter, nothing that will shield you from the vexation that is in the territory. For he shall make him quick in understanding and in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness, he shall judge and make war. I'm going to stop because of time. 30 minutes for us to do the healing. Can you ask God where you are seated? Oh God, light my candle. There's an inner light that is supposed to open your eyes. Light my candle. Oh my God. Siako Pami Sopre my candle Roskito Pemahan Soli 
Hebrew siko beba kuria kantelia. Light my candle. Kindle the fire that is in my spirit so that my eyes can see that which is hidden from the eyes of mortal men. Light my candle. Light my candle. Light my candle. Uske kompeli zahaba kurya. Sheminai kompes kudi la hezine. Light my candle. Light my candle. That fire must be kindled. Oh my God. I'm not a slave of money. I am your slave. So I ask, light my candle. Show me great and mighty things that I do not know. Si hakose la haide. Ebris govata menaila. Mespufe la bouge hi. Kamin doma. Saka kedo kopeskide. Kabo santeli. Kababonga basiko pres. Ufetamina itola. Abamben kumbaski. Brasa kababoko dama. Kovela hi konsen. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Mando, Mando, Moria, Shika, Baba, 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 Oh, 
excited it's excited it comes it comes in his splendor it comes in his grace he comes he comes he comes to his people he comes to exchange their weakness for his strength he comes Change their trouble for his peace. He comes, he comes, he comes, he comes to stand with them, to take them out of the storm. He comes, he comes, even now, he comes, even now, he yet comes, he, he comes, he comes now. Even now he comes. Even now he comes. Even now he comes. Even now. 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 Breaking every yoke. Even now, she has got a nice son, Tala. Yes, cope me, Nesi, Presco Filamo, of Obedite. Even now, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Now I want to pray for the sick briefly. If you are here, you use medicated glasses to read or to drive or to see. Please remove them. And lay your hands on your eyes. If you have a hearing problem, if you have a hearing problem, put your hand on the ear and close that ear that cannot hear. If your situation is a growth or a fibroid, a cancer, put your hand where the growth is. If it's a situation of paralysis, put your hand where the paralyzed hand or leg is. If it's pain, trace the pain and put your hand.
If it has to do with mental health, put your hand on your head. If you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, you can put your hand on your stomach. As we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise. I thank you because of your presence that is in this place. And we take advantage of your presence and we arrest every spirit of infirmity, every pain, every growth. I arrest you in the name of Jesus Christ. I arrest blinding spirits. Blinding spirits be bound. Be bound. Be bound. Be bound. And come out of your eyes in the name of Jesus. Amen. Deafening spirit be bound. Amen. Come out of the ears in the name of Jesus. Amen. I command the pains to come out in the name of Jesus. Amen. I break the yoke of growths, fibroids, cancers. Die in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I arrest every paralysis. Every pain. Everything. Condition, oh my God, sleeplessness, I arrest you in the name of Jesus. I take authority over asthma in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak to the eyes. I see. Yes, hear. Pain, go. Cancer, dry up. Fibroid, growth, dry up. Womb, be open. Womb open, womb open, womb open. Everyone that is tied, any bondage in the spirit, in the name of Jesus, I break that hole. I break that hole. I break that hole. Lose them in Jesus' name. Yes. Lose them in Jesus' name. Amen. I command asthma. Jump out now. Jump out. In the name of Jesus. Sikobres Pufilani Candelia. Mabrosko Pekatiko Bakula. Seminai Kompezike Tele Kompalube. Isko Papa Lantelia. Kovese Kenebandeli. We release people into their destinies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I can see two eyes already open. So at least two eyes have been healed so you have a moment check your eyes if you can't read conduct a test conduct a test quickly 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 conduct a test if you came with a pain check for the pain if you came with a pain check for the pain yes you have you have been through many troubles. Oh. So today I take away oh. the heavy burden, the oh. heavy burden, the heavy burden from your head. Oh. Yes, have you checked your eyes? If you notice there's an improvement, at least, I, I see at least two people on your eyes. Come. On your eyes. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Now listen. There's an anointing here. This anointing doesn't come very often. But it has come today. Now can we be silent for a moment? No, I'm not saying you. And then the angel of the Lord will pass through this room. You come and take things that doesn't belong to you. Just for, for
for 17 seconds. I will let you know. Okay, he's coming. 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 Oh my God, he's coming. He's coming stronger. 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 Copelis. Cobasketomis. He go bresco filetis. I saw my hamba. Cofrescato la me. Ah. Yo si cobra me. Si copres o folondo meli. Calabro coschi tope ma ingo bami. Sai cosche si ne le vonoro cose mai. Ai momoro coschi to bandeli. Esali copra schi to bama. Aschi do bresco fa de mondali. Escai tombela. Entro hosco prosketila. The hand of God is upon you, upon your household. Oh my God. Bessila. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Yes, you notice the pain has gone. You notice you can see. The rest of us can sit down. I have five minutes. Yes. Those. I wouldn't read from now. Now. Let give give some volume there. Yeah, I couldn't see from afar. Couldn't see from afar. Yeah, but now I can see. I can see what. You can right. see now. It is permanent. I'm seeing a pain, a pain, someone here, a pain here. And that pain has gone. But I'm waiting, no, 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 not amen. I'm telling you what I see. So I'm waiting for that person. You came with a pain here. And the Lord has taken the pain away, but I'm waiting for you. Yes, find out from this sister. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I use glasses to read. Without that, I can't see. Without the glasses, you cannot see. Yeah, I can't see. It's For I how see many years thing. have you used the glasses? From six years now. Using glasses. Six years now. Yeah. So when you say we should check it, you can check. I don't see that. I could see them. You could see the, yeah. the print. It's true. It's permanent. Amen. I saw you wearing glasses. Why? Is it for fashion? Come on. Come, come. Oh. Yes, what happened to you? Hey, wait, wait. Someone, I know you will not believe this. But someone that has a growth, you have a growth on your body, you have a growth on your body, please, that person, go to the restroom and check for that growth. You have a growth on your body. Go to the restroom, anywhere it is, and check for the growth. You stand here. Oh! See, the angel of the Lord is touching me here. Now, wait, wait, wait. Whenever it touches me here, it means it's anointing someone with, with some of the anointing that God has given me. Now listen, someone has been anointed. The anointing will begin to intensify. Oh my God. It will begin to intensify. It will begin to intensify. It will come stronger. It will come stronger. Come stronger. Come stronger. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Ushers, if you find the person, 
bring the person. Oh, it's even stronger. It's even stronger. It's even stronger. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. There's somebody here you've been, you, you, you've been trusting God for your documents and all of that for, for a long time. You've not heard anything. You will hear. Yes, it's done. It's, you will get it. You get it. Yes, touch that man. Let him come. Come, 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 come. Siko preminali. Siko sketo bonda. I say. So prehele kali. Samai kumbala. Yes. Receive the anointing. As you lay your hands upon the sick, they will recover. They'll be healed. In the name of Jesus. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. <laughs> There's somebody here, a woman, a woman that cannot sleep in the night. And when you sleep for a while and something wakes you up, you can, you, you can hardly go back to sleep. Where's this woman? Come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let her go in the name of Jesus. So you will sleep this night. Why is the second person? Can't sleep. Release her. Release her. Release her. In the name of Jesus. Ah, you will sleep tonight. Now listen. I see. I see the spirit of death. The spirit of death is haunting someone in this auditorium. Father, anyone here that the spirit of death is haunting arrest that person the hand of God will come on you oh my it's even coming now it's even coming stronger 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 find that one that the spirit of death is haunting find that one in this congregation it's coming even stronger 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 Holy Ghost, from my left hand side to my right hand side, from my left hand side to my right hand side. That one that death, death is hunting, death is hunting, death is hunting. Father, put your hand on that individual. Put your hand on that individual. And let, okay, oh, it's still strong. It's still strong. It's still strong. It's still coming strong. Still, the wave is still coming. It's still coming. Show me that one. 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 Okay, where's my handkerchief? Come and help me. Take this energy. Go into the congregation. Put it on everybody's head. Just touch them. When you touch the person that I'm talking about, there will be a reaction. Just keep touching them on the head. Keep touching them. 
Keep touching them. Even the people on the line, you can touch them. Touch, make sure you touch everybody. Touch everybody. We are going to destroy death this night. The covenant of death will be destroyed this night. Just keep touching, keep touching, keep touching. Keep touching, keep touching. When you put it on the person that I'm talking about, there will be a reaction. There will be a reaction. Keep touching, keep touching. Keep touching, keep touching. Keep touching. There will be a reaction. Keep touching, keep touching. He could sell him and baptize. Keep touching, keep touching. Keep touching. Keep touching. Keep touching. It's an emergency. We have to deal with this matter. Keep touching, keep touching. Death has been sent on an errand and we must arrest him. We must arrest it. You can't operate here. You can't function here. You can't function here. You can't function here. Ah. Ah. She a cabe so sila. She a compre his a catapoco. Ambraska taya toke basi. You can't function here. You can't function here. He sofre helicate. Who be my campolas? Can't work here, can't work here, can't function here. Si a comparia si copena hanteli. Saiko meniante e kebo malaya. Arana masonteria. Eskute ma babarato skito bremi naito. Cosa salimo Coria Banta Baboria? Esco si somena chi la bonda. Asi ko premi na ito kabila. Now. 
is breaking now. So sick about me now, that has was casted on your life will destroy it in the name of Jesus Christ. For he said, Awake, O thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give thee light. Christ will give thee light. There are some people I see here. You have a calling, you run away from your calling. Come back. Come back. Come back. So came I in like yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, you can go. You can go. Come on from where you were tied. Jesus gives you light. And I ask that a measure of grace might come upon your servants. Oh my God. As an intercessor and a minstrel, you will cause her horn to be exalted like the horn of a unicorn. glorify himself through your face 
and one of your children too will inherit the spirit of an intercessor. I see a wind coming. A wind comes. A wind comes. A wind comes. Do you have oil? Oil. Sika kambarasi. Mero go samakase. Isko brema hise. If you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, it's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. For the prison houses are open. Them that are bound are set at liberty. There is a clarion call from the belly of heaven. Let my people go that they might serve me. Let my people go that they might serve me. Is a Kelia Mahabai forever? We want to put, make a declaration on the life of the man of God. And the Lord will give you two wings like that of an eagle so that you can mount up with wings into heavenly places. High places in Zion. Let the grace be renewed in the name of Jesus. Out of that which is prophetic, that which is apostolic, let the horn of giants be handed out to your ministry, to your life in the name of Jesus. Let there be increase authority. Let the hand of the Lord be stretched for. Hey. 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 Fobela ikos kito pami habara kasatelia embrokose katakuli mekadia umba hasiko umbarasi ko pamena. Sakatala Babonde. Arise. Take your place. For you will be a witness of the things that you have seen. And of the things in the which the Lord shall make to appear unto thee. So let it be written. So let it be done. In Jesus' name. Yes, yeah, sister, continue, continue your good work. Where is the lady I asked to go and check growth? The growth. Have you checked the growth? Is it still there? It has gone. Yeah. What's wrong with him? She can no longer find the growth. All the symptoms of delay over your life have been withdrawn. 
Yeah. You will smile. <laughs> you will smile. Nothing will be able to destroy you in this land or in any other land. You will see. A stronger activation of the prophetic. Amen. Jesus will come and have discussions with you. Amen. You won't need to advertise yourself. Because the Lord himself will advertise you. Amen. Thank you, Father. So does this condition have a name? What's the name? Um, it's like in German called the Muskel Dystrophy. Um, All right, so I'll need this seat. Sorry. Um, yeah, Joseph? Stretch your hand in this direction. Let us try to God about this young man. to touch your back yeah, the Lord says that's where we need to, I need to lay my hand father in the name of Jesus I don't know the name of this sickness but I know this is the work of the devil and I break the yoke of the devil I shut down the activity of the devil and I bring unto your servant life from Jesus. Yeah. Life from the crown of your head, oh my, to the soles of your feet. I bring life. I bring life from Jesus. Let strength begin to come upon him as he sleeps, as he wakes up, as he sleeps, as he wakes up. Let him discover after 25 days after 27 days after 30 days let him discover that he has much authority over his body oh my god oh i bring life to you in the name of jesus from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet i bring life i bring life I bring life to you. 
I bring life to you. In Jesus' name. Now, I will give you a number by which you'll be giving me updates because in four months' time, I'm expecting many changes. So I'll give you a number before I leave today. What's your name? All right, so I'll be talking to your dad. He'll be giving me updates about you. And I'll be praying through his phone on your ears until four months. Yeah, so are you a doctor? Oh, okay. You are not practicing? No. Oh, so, okay. What's the name of that thing? Yeah. Okay. So for how long have you had that pain? Well, it started three weeks ago. started three weeks ago. I was trying to lift something. You were, you were trying to lift something, so you had a crack. What's wrong with this microphone? Is it dead? Okay. So, trying to lift something at work, then I felt the crack there, so it was hard for me to move my wait, body. Wait, wait, don't worry, no, don't run away, don't run away. It's okay. I need to... So let her go. Let her go, you foul spirit of darkness. I destroyed the covenant. I destroy the link. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, so you were lifting something. I walk, yeah. And then you felt a crack. I felt a crack. Then you've had the pain. I've had the pain. Oh my God, the Lord is upon you. The Lord is upon you. It's upon you like a light. You have favor with God. If you labor in the place of prayer, your prayer can change so many things. For your heart is right. Your heart is right. Grace is released to you in the name of Jesus. Yes, so she, she's coming from where she was tied. Come. Come out. Come out. Come out. For Jesus brings you liberty. Amen. Jesus brings you freedom. Amen. Yeah, come out. For your name is written in the book of life. Amen. You have no covenant with death. Amen. Death cannot come for you. Amen. Only life. Only life. Only life. Yeah? So I've been feeling pains whenever I want to tie my shoelace. When you want to tie your shoelace? And when I want to just pick something on the floor. Pick something on the floor? So it's been... Did you try it? Did you test it? Yeah, I tested it. When I was sitting there, I was so, it was as if I was unaware of the pain that was on my back. Even so, though you just said it, I it, totally forgot that You I forgot something. that you had pain? another aspect of your life that has opened but I don't want to say it publicly you are released Amen. all right so I've, I've used up all my time so what we'll do now is that we'll pray so that they have, oh my god Someone ran away from ministry. Someone in this place, you ran away. Where are you? Come. You ran away. You ran away. Come. Come to me. Come to me. Don't go. You ran. 
He stopped. He stopped. Come. Come. Where are you? Ooh. Why did you run? Ooh. So, I will pray with you and you will find help. Jesus, look upon him with mercy. With mercy. With mercy. Gather him together and help him. Yeah, what happened to you? Um, I, I got a new job and I drive a lot. You so, drive? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So since the winter, my... Your red, back, your back. Yeah. Oh, my God. So for the past, like, two days now, I had to place pillows on the back. couch. Yeah. So that you can... I can see. Okay. And when I lie down, it's... It's a hell of a pain. Okay, so do you still feel the pain? Uh, I just, I just sit and I just try not to put my mind there. You still feel it now? Oh no, no, that okay. was why when you announced. So when it, I, I said that was, out. you came out. Yes. So did you check it? I could sit well there because at home before I left, I put it. The Lord Jesus. You know why I asked you why if you were a doctor? Don't worry, I don't want you to change jobs, okay? That's not it. The gift of healing is on your right hand. See it. I don't know, maybe that was your motivation for reading medicine, but or anything related to medicine, but there's something here. So we activate it, we activate it. Fan it to flame. Bring it alive. So felico brove. Scambo u villa sumanda yeto. Prehesco pila. Adana mangoma. Shekaboma. Ia. I put a blessing upon you. Or well, your heart is right. Enlarge. Expand. May the Lord make your name great. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Oh. That which was taken from you is restored. So I'm about to run away now. your brother here. Can you call him? I have something for him. Don't run away. The Lord have been revealing you to me. Sir. Don't run away. Don't run away. Don't run away. Hey, he's in need of you. He's in need. He's in need. Were you born like that with those with a challenge on your eyes? Yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, yeah, when I was young, I didn't notice, but yeah, from a young age, I had glasses. So I pray, give him sight. Amen. Give him sight. Amen. Give him sight. Amen. Now, go and look for water and then wash your face three times. Come back.
Come, come, I have water. So, I'll place my hand here. Is Kofelamis Kiso Santelli? Oh, there's a calling on your spirit. Nothing can fight the calling of God. Me bro oskete minda haleko. Oh, there's a lamb lit by the Lord's hand Himself. So Lord, I put my hands on His head so that Your hands can flow through my hands. Let this weapon that was thrown at Him to resist Him to stop Him. Let it be removed. Oh my God. 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 Arise. I say arise. For Christ himself doth give you light. Arise. Walk away from the darkness. Oh, son of light. Walk away, walk away. Even in your dreams, walk away. Take hold of the center that the great monarch has placed in your hand. For you shall be shepherd over his flock. Go in this thy might. The Lord will cause your face to shine. In Jesus' name. All right, where were we? I'm, I will not go to the office. I'm going straight. Yes, I'm going straight. I have to pray. Uh, the, the, the Lord is calling me to go and pray. Can we do this quickly? Can we pray? Ask God for anything but one, just one, one thing. There's an open check right now. Ask him for one thing. One thing, just one thing. Don't joke with this moment. You are the Lord. 